Section 26.10, the human eye. So this is a look at anatomy. It's a whole application of the various optics that we've been learning about. And it's a look at how the eyeball works. It turns out that light, as it passes into your eye, gets refracted by each of the various substances. So the cornea, the aqueous humor, the lens, and then this uh, vitreous humor, these all have slightly different indices of refraction that cause the light to bend. And so that is a big part of how this all works. And the lens is one of the key parts within that. So the lens, it turns out, contributes only about a quarter of the refraction of the bending of the light. But its function is why is that? Well, the lens is one part of your eye that kills the lens. If your eye is just relaxed, then you can focus on a distant object, something that's far away, and that will then uh, be able to uh, be focused by your lens to produce an image on the retina, which is like your film for a camera. But for your eye, it's you need to form the image right there. And if it isn't formed right on the retina, then it's going to be blurry, which we'll get to look at in just a moment. Now, for an object that's close up, your lens has to tense to be able to focus on something that close to your face. And so it tenses to bend the light to converge more rapidly to form this image on the retina as it should be. So it's really key that we have a lens that can adjust in order to focus on different things. And that's what you even do in photography with a camera you shift your lens's focus to be able to focus on objects that are further away versus objects that are closer to your face. So the more you get into photography, the more you appreciate the wonders of what the human eye can really do. Now I mentioned we'll get into a couple of the flaws. One of the flaws in optics or in human eyes is nearsightedness. So I'm nearsighted, right? It means that without my glasses or contacts, I can only see near. I cannot see far away. So let's look at some of the physics there. Well, this says that even with my fully relaxed lens, my far point isn't as far out as it should be, which is relatively infinitely far away. So my far point's a little bit closer of how far I'm able to focus on an object or someone else with nearsightedness. So if any object is beyond the far point of a nearsighted person's eye, then that distant object, when it passes through even the most relaxed lens, forms an image in front of the retina too soon. So the retina only sees a blurred version of the image. It's not sharp. What do we do then? Well, if we put in a diverging lens, then that causes the light rays to not converge too soon, to not form in front of the retina, and it, it can then converge right on the retina if it's carefully adjusted, which we'll see an example of in just a moment. The other way to look at this is that the diverging lens takes the object and creates a virtual image that you can only see by looking through the lens, and that virtual image is at the far point of the nearsighted eye. So when you're looking through glasses, you're actually looking at virtual images where the, dis the light from the distant object has been effectively creating an image of something that's closer where your eye can focus on it. That's pretty cool. So let's look at an example here. Eyeglasses for a nearsighted person. This is very relevant to myself. A nearsighted person has a far point located only 521 centimeters from their eye. So assuming that they do not have their glasses on, right, they can only see things that are about five meters away. Assuming that eyeglasses are to be worn two centimeters, about an inch in front of the eye, find the focal length needed for the diverging lens of the glasses so the person can see distant objects. Okay. So there's a couple of things to take into account. Notice we only have two numbers here, 521 centimeters and two centimeters. And that's, notice that 521 centimeters in our picture tells us how far 
the far point is from the eyeball itself. But if we want to find the focal length, this is getting me thinking of our thin lens equation. And so that has object distance and image distances. So thinking about that, we want our image distance to be at the far point, which is 521 centimeters. But in terms of the lens, the distance from the lens is less than 521 centimeters, right? It's only 519 centimeters because we only care about the distance from the image to the lens itself, not to the entire eye. So that would be our DI of where we want the image to form. Where is the object? Well, the object is somewhere beyond the far point, somewhere out here, and it's so far away that we can assume that the object distance is actually just infinitely far away. You can plug it in bigger numbers and you'll get the same result. So this is what we want to keep in mind. And with those things, we can then look at the solution where we have our thin lens equation, one over F is equal to one over DO plus one over DI. The object distance here is uh, this infinity. And then the image distance is 519, but be careful here. Because it's a virtual image, it's a negative 519, which is why this became minus one over 519 centimeters. So one over infinity is just going to come to zero every time. So we don't need to worry about that. So then we have one over F is equal to one over negative 519. So if you just flip that, then the focal length is just negative 519 centimeters. So that tells you about what you need for your particular uh, eyeglasses, which is pretty nifty. All right, now the flip side of nearsightedness is there's also farsightedness. With farsightedness, you see this um, especially as people get older, right, where if they don't have glasses on, they're trying to read something, and what do they do? They do a, this thing, right, where they're like, if they get far enough away, then maybe they can actually focus on it. Well, let's take a look now at the physics. So what happens for far sadness is their near point has gotten further away, the distance to which something needs to be for them to still be able to focus on it. So if an object is closer than their near point, then when, even when it passes through the tensest lens, the image forms behind the retina where it's sharp. So it's only going to be blurry on the retina. So what can we do? Well, if we put in a converging lens for the far-sighted person, that causes those light rays coming from the object to converge sooner and form the sharp image on the retina instead of behind the retina. That's great. The other way to look at this in terms of lenses and our optics is that the converging lens creates a virtual image that's further away, where the virtual image is at the near point of the far-sighted eye, a place where the eye can actually focus on it and create a sharp image. So this is I find this really cool to see physics in action and how just simple eyeglasses work. One thing I'll note is with contact lenses, because they're right on the eyeball, you don't have to do that thing that we did in the last example of subtracting the two centimeters. So that's just something specific to glasses where we're always measuring the distance uh, for using the thin lens equation from the lens to the object. All right, one last thing on the human eye is the refractive power of a lens is said to be something known as the diopter. So optometrists who prescribe correctional lenses uh, usually don't tell you the focal length. That's, they don't usually say, oh, it's a focal length of 519 centimeters or negative 519 centimeters. Instead, they use the concept of refractive power, which is measured in diopters. And it's just one over the focal length with the focal length in meters. So for me, I, I see this with my contact lens prescription. If you have ever gotten that or seen someone else's contact lens prescription, 
my contact lenses are negative, around negative 2.50. Well, the negative has to do with it's a negative focal length because I'm nearsighted, so it's a diverging lens. Cool. And then the 2.50 is that it's one over the focal length to get that refractive power. So it's negative 2.5 diopters. So there you have it. That's an example of refractive power. Next time you go to the optometrist or have someone else go, you can talk about the science of everything that's going on.